I'm not really sure how familiar any of you are with um, uh, the Mozilla Rust language. Um, it's, uh, it basically is like uh, um, more type safe C++ code. And uh, when I started, there wasn't any editor of any kind. So you basically sat in your Vim or Emacs and programmed and then ran terminal commands. So I, um, instead of writing my game or, or my game in Rust, I started writing an IDE instead. Um, so I'm not really sure how fun it is to actually look at since I can't really display anything really really I can uh, can build it but unfortunately it doesn't build on this machine currently my game that is um, I could um, I don't know have a look at the vastly the super many um, settings stuff I can change um, I've made uh, um, I'm not really sure um, since my pet peeve of most editors these, day these days are they are written in JavaScript and uh, some of them are really slow and some of them are, you can't change m the thing you want. For example, in, I don't know, brackets, I believe, um, you can't, if you want a bright brackets editor, you can't since part of the brackets is always dark. So I've made, I'm not really sure if this will work. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm running, not running Solarized. So if this will work, I could, sh I, I can change the whole editor, including that bar. If, if, but um, there are bugs in it, <laughs> since I've only been working for it like a year. So I'm not really, since I can I can change stuff. Um, I'm not really sure <laughs> what I el else I can show you. I'm not really sure. What do you want to know? Uh, so you wrote an IDE for Rust in Rust. No, not in Rust. Since uh, there aren't any really any GUI frameworks in Rust that are cross-platform. So this is currently in C++. Everything. Um, the best uh, GUI framework is, um, I'm not really sure if there looks like this, and it's only in, it works on GTK, I believe, so it doesn't work on Windows. Um, I think that would be sad. I want my, I want my IDE cross-platform. So, at the moment, it's written in C++, but as soon as um, there is a good framework in Rust, I want to move it to Rust completely. Uh, what's the benefit of going to Rust? Um, if you think of C++ and C++ crashes when you uh, have a null pointer and you try to use it, in Rust there are no null pointers. Basically, there are pointers, but there are no null pointers. It's based and pretty much every code or every crash or bug or crash I've had when I wrote this in C++ would be, would have been a compile error in Rust. So I basically think of Rust like a type safe C++. Yeah, it's it knows more about your code. So it can check for more. What is the command line uh, argument I can pass to framework to the Rust compiler? Run part, I'm not really, uh, um, arguments. arguments. I'm not really sure because um, if I have a look at the project settings, oh no, um, I'm not really sure if, you, if this is what you're looking for or asking for. Since I when I hit build, for example, or run, um, I this is the command line I'm running, and um, I can for for the, the, the um, for the debug build here I've added verbose 
and I can remove reverse and I can add um, not really logical but I can say hey please build release when I say build re debug and I can specify custom targets here and if I hit build it says invalid argument since hello isn't a valid argument I hope that answers answer your question. Yeah. Um, not really. Um, I I I want in my IDE, I want the built-in debugger. So, by then I would have to use GDB. And or the Rust equivalent. And Vim doesn't really do that. <laughs> yes? yes uh, how does it feel when you are uh, trying to work on your game and you find a, a bug in your idea? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I started this, I'm not really sure when I started this actual game engine, but currently it um, just displays black, I think. Or no, it's um, green. Just a green screen. And that's how far I've gotten on the game. <laughs> um, yeah, basi basically. I also learned more about um, editors in general, since um, I'm not really sure um, if you're familiar, how familiar you are with um, the different um, Emacs plugins but there's a plugin for Emacs called par edit I believe for typing in uh, uh, Lisp and um, the way um, ah Jesus um, the way when you type in Lisp you want to match your parentheses parentheses and your squi squiggly braces and whatnot and uh, when I started writing here I wanted to, to have some so sort of auto completion so I basically found par edit and copied par edit into this uh, this editor. So basically when I type open parenthesis, it automatically adds the closing parenthesis. And and that worked like that. And I can when I type close parenthesis in par edit, it navigates to the right most or or the next parenthesis. So I can navigate my code like that, and it also works with other characters. And um, let's see, it but strings work kind of different since strings are are the same character. So in strings, you it act out out escapes the string when you type. So basically, I stole that from Paradit. So. To kind of answer the question, it feels sucky when writing a game, but it feels kind of cool when you find out a feature and you want that feature in e all the other editors when you're writing C++ code. And you fight Visual Studio or whatever when you're typing and, and you get unmatched parentheses. And why doesn't it work like this? It's so easy. Probably. <laughs> um, that's why you can't turn it off currently. And I'm thinking there should be a shortcut to temporarily turn off all, all automatic typing. And um, I'm not really sure if I can actually, since there's some form of intelligence here. And th that intelligence is actually um, a Rust project. That's not written by me, so I'm. I actually call. Let's see, uh, see if I can actually remember. So if I there aren't any completions. Um, currently, this is li part little part buggy, since. Um, I'm not really sure what my thought is, uh, train of thought here is, but basically. This will display the actual command line it tries to run. 
and for some reason um, the actual auto completion program is a little bit I don't, I'm not really going to say buggy but it um, it's under development so so it won't actually detect oh well. so this will actually no this will actually work um, in some cases um, it fails to parse the a, the actual f file buffer and that will it will save parse fail instead of no completions here it's a little bit hard to read this output but it, um, I'm not really sure what the question was yes Yeah, kind of. Um, the idea um, of the game is really, really might not be complicated, but it's. Um, I started writing the game in C++, and then I got bored in s on C++, so I started writing in Rust instead. <laughs> <laughs> so I basically threw all, all out all my game code. But the but the game is I'm not really sure if it's really interesting or it's really really interesting. But um, if you have if you played, um, there's a British game called Lander, where you f control a vessel and you can only go upwards, and you you go forward by rotating forward, right ro ro rotating forward. So you looking down and then go upwards and part of the game is moving around in uh, or navigating a 3d world without crashing and it's physics based so you so you have to uh, um, control your gravity so you don't crash also i thought that would be fun to do and also because it would should be pretty easy since you don't have um, many animated meshes, so it should be pretty doable with program art. But I started writing an IDE instead, so <laughs> so there is a to-do list and here here that I want to do complete. No, currently no. Currently, I um, I can build. Yeah. Break it down in in the simple small tasks. B um, basically, um, an IDE sounds really really hard, but I think it's pretty easy actually, since the first part is getting an editor uh, a text window, and loading a file, and saving that file. The next step, I would guess, is the Project Explorer and having the Project Explorer view your local files and then maybe upgrading your text editor to actually be something more than just a basic text editor. So this is um, Centella, if you're familiar with it. It's basically an editor component that you say, here is my code or load this file and this file is uh, C++, or this file is Rust, or this file is um, protobuffers, or whatever. And it will actually do most of the coloring for you. So you, uh, you only have to do minor things like um, indenting or stuff. So basically, you, you start simple and you keep adding I'm not really sure, since this is my, I don't know, second ID or whatever. Um, and this is pretty much how far I've gotten. <laughs>